the Somme began on July the 1st, 1916. It shook the world with its bloody carnage. So the biggest army the British had ever sent into battle, every man a volunteer, began to advance along a 15-mile front. At the end of the first day, the British forces had made no substantial territorial gains, but the casualties had been horrific. 60,000 men had been killed or wounded in a matter of hours. The Battle of Somme was fought near the Somme River in France. The British intended to break through German defenses within hours. German soldiers were destroying the oncoming British infantry. The battle ended on November 1, 1916. Somme was one of the bloodiest battles in history. The Allies and Central Powers lost 1.5 million men by the end of the war. The 21st of November, 1917. Across the whole of Britain, the church bells were ringing. After three terrible years of the Great War, there was at last a clear-cut victory. The British Third Army had broken through the German line to a depth of five miles and taken 10,000 prisoners. Bells were also celebrating something more than what seemed to be the first victory in years. The British had used a wholly new weapon of war and on a grand scale. The Bells were celebrating the triumph of the tank, which had won its first battle. 476 tanks were used to gain two to three miles in just one day. The Germans slowly recovered all of the land they lost to Great Britain. The Germans lost 50,000 soldiers and the British lost 45,000 soldiers. It's a long way to Tipperary. It's a long way to go. It's a long way. Woodrow Wilson, the 28th United States president, made critical decisions when in dire straits and solidified the USA as a strong force during World War I. David Lloyd George represented Great Britain as a prime minister with aggressive, offensive, and planned violent war strategies and policies while in office. Prime Minister of France, Georges Clemenceau improved his country's results in battle by unifying his troops with his allies and continually boosting morale. Finally, Vittorio Orlando, Prime Minister of Italy, was the weakest figure of the bunch. He sought to gain land and meet his country's interests, but both plans resulted in ultimate failure. Representing the German public was Kaiser Wilhelm II, a strong-willed emperor fierce to taste victory. His persuasive orations and clever picks for ruthless generals justify his brutality. Mehmed V was Sultan of the Ottoman Empire and left a small impact due to the harsh conditions of joining the war against his own power. The final emperor, the unconfident Franz Joseph I of Austria, led Austria-Hungary during the war, leaving all major decisions to lower figures. The British excelled in quality of their propaganda. Their newspapers printed headlines that stirred up emotions regardless of whether they were true or not. Victories were exaggerated while defeats were downplayed. The propaganda was used to appeal to a sense of national honor. The posters and pamphlets were designated to produce guilt among the men who didn't volunteer for service. Germany had good visual media, which was an advantage over Great Britain. The Germans placed less emphasis in recruiting propaganda than the Allies. During the first year of war, propaganda films were made that unrealistically portrayed war. Germany produced less propaganda posters and articles than Great Britain. The United States produced the most propaganda posters than any other nation. The government printed propaganda posters to persuade people to support the war before TV and radio. The New York Times posted graphics every day showing which states contributed the most recruits and bought the most war bonds. The United States of America made a pledge of neutrality at the start of the war and the general public agreed. This would avoid mass casualties and could leave the war as a separate conflict in the European nations. But violence erupted and the U.S. was being surrounded by a threatening country ready to clash. A change in American attitude occurred when the British ship Lusitania was sunk by a German U-boat. Of the 1,198 who were killed, there were 128 Americans. More ships were sunk, incurring more loss of American lives. 
when the German Kaiser announced on January 31st, 1917, that U-boats would sink all ships in British waters, there seemed little choice but to enter the war. The discovery of the Zimmermann telegram cemented that decision. It was a coded note from German Foreign Minister Arthur Zimmermann to the German minister in Mexico, promising U.S. territory to Mexico in return for joining the German cause. The war had finally arrived. Differing from the public, isolationists believed that the U.S. should avoid international affairs. They wanted to steer clear of permanent alliances, according to George Washington when he first conceived the idea. Isolationists believed democracy was only preserved by keeping the United States isolated.